order. Please call the roll. Chair Allen? Here. Chair Fitzpatrick? Representative Morgan? Here. Alphaman? Anderson? Here. Conway? Here. Lavender? <coughs> Rhodes? Here. Walter Gray? Zare? Here. And we do have a quorum, and I move uh, the, I'm sorry, the Committee on Fiscal Review is now in executive session. So this is also a Okay, Mr. Chairman, we're going to move to do pass Senate Bills 586 and 651. Um, Senator Watson, if you would just briefly give us a quick description and welcome back over here to the house thank you madam chairman pleasure to be here uh, i'll be as brief as i can uh, in 2005 we passed the, the uh, formula bill it was thought then to be a very fair and very good formula it is i think today still thought to be a very good and very fair formula but in 2009 because we thought the gambling votes were going to bring in a huge amount of money 75 million a year was the expectation at the time. Uh, we took the 5% cap off of it at that time. Um, since then, the uh, gambling money is today 19, I believe it is, now, or $19 million less than it was in 2009. So the gambling money never came. Uh, what we are short, 400, somewhere in the $400 million area, if you take 75 million times seven, that's just about what it is. So. What we're short is what the gambling money would have been. It never came in. It's not going to come in. Missouri citizens are a little smarter than we thought they were. They don't spend all their money at the gambling boats. And so this is just trying to put the uh, bill back where it originally was, where what to do what it was supposed to do. Thank you. Mickey or Ross, you want to add? Please. <laughs> As Senator Watson said, there was a, a shortage in the revenue that's been coming in, and this is trying to be a fix. We don't know whether it's going to be a positive or a negative. It will be excessive, probably at more than a million dollar swing in what's going to be needed to fund into the program, whether it be to get it back into sync the way that it was in 2009 or to bring it into some kind of updated number that it could be to where the Instead of the shortage we have, it's 400, around 450 million now is the shortage. And I might, I might add, Madam Chairman, it's, this, is, this won't cost any school any money. They're already being funded at what they're being funded at. It's not going to take a thing away from any of them. Uh, it's just simply this $500 million gap. If it continues to grow and gets to be a billion dollar gap, our funding formula will be working. This is basically trying to save the formula so it can be used for the next 10 or 20 years instead of us having the bloody fight of trying to do a new one on the floor. Very good. Questions? Representative Morgan, briefly. Thank you. I know that in a, we had a similar bill. Oh, this one is. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I know we had a similar bill in the House, and that would have set the state adequacy target around $6,200. Is that, um, does the fiscal note reflect that, that it will be setting it at $6,200? I believe it does. And also, it doesn't cost any schools any money. Right. And also, that it, 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 talk, it talks about the current operating expenditures being modified. How does the fiscal note um, deal with that? That would be up to. One of the changes in the in the proposal will bring the charter schools into where they have to use ADA so that they, they become more paid like the rest of the schools are. And it puts a cap on that adequacy target, and that's the term. We call it adequacy target, but to get there, you got to use the uh, what's called the current operating expenditures. So it's all, it, it flows in through the program through the proposal in the fiscal note. That's why it's either a positive or a negative. We're not sure what it's going to do. And in terms of the charter schools, does the fiscal note, it seemed like it discussed if early childhood were That's fully funded. Yeah. It addresses okay. it. Address. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Further questions? Seeing none, I renew my motion to do past Senate Bills 
586 and 651. Please call the roll. Chair Allen? Aye. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Representative Morgan? No. Offerman? Anderson? Aye. Conway? Aye. Lavender? <coughs> Rhodes? Aye. Walton Gray? <coughs> Zare? Aye. Fair vote, uh, uh, five ayes, one no. Motion carries. Could you pass? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, I now move to do pass conference committee report number two for House Bill 2203. Representative Barnes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for moving with due speed on Friday on conference committee report number one, which had an error in it. Uh, so that we can get conference committee report number two in front of the committee. There is zero fiscal note on this. This is one of the ethics bills. And there are questions that we have to answer. Question seeing none, please call the room. Fitzpatrick, Representative Morgan. Yes. Alferman, Anderson. Aye. Conway. Aye. Lavender. Rhodes. Aye. Walton Gray. Zare. Aye. Six. Motion carries. Thank you, Six ayes, no noes. Uh, to the pass. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, I move to do pass Senate Bill 621. Senator Romine, do you have any quick comments? And welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, this has been a labor of love of three years. All the stakeholders have been actively involved, and we really are excited about the product that's been produced and all that effort. Uh, both the House and Senate have worked in various capacities on this and so i uh, just appreciate the opportunity to get this voted out today thank you have something to add a very similar bill uh, house bill 1923 has been through fiscal review earlier on it as well and uh, costs are real real identical real close similar to what was recorded through here before. It will not become fully implemented in until 2020. And that's why we have the full column on the fiscal note showing the year that it would be fully implemented. Questions, seeing none, please call the roll. Chair Allen? Aye. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Representative Morgan? Yes. Alperman? Anderson? Aye. Conway? Aye. Lavender? Rhodes? Aye. Walton Gray, Zare, aye. By your motion of six ayes, no no, so much cares to do pass Senate Bill 621. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to do pass House Bill 1611. Representative Swan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee. The underlying bill for 1611 is a bill that incentivizes school districts to adopt an implement <coughs> an academic and career counseling program the best interest of students in their districts. Several amendments were added on the bill. The fiscal note reflects that the amendments, a couple of them that were added on. The first is $170,000 annually cost uh, to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education that pertains to allowing music therapists to provide services to children in, from birth to age three in the First Steps program. It is assumed that it will come from general revenue and the figure was derived by oversight by averaging on page four, the last two paragraphs of other services that could be comparable to uh, music therapy and the rate and the frequency for which it's provided. The other two costs on a fiscal note, one pertains to the professional development of a program uh, dyslexia training program for school districts and the other pertains to the expenses incurred over a short period of time for the legislative task force on dyslexia. Question, discussion, seeing none, please call. Oh, I uh, renew my motion. Wait. 
Take five roll. Chair Allen? Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Representative Morgan? Yes. Alperman? Anderson? Aye. Conway? Aye. Lavender? Aye. Rhodes? Aye. Walton Gray? Zare? By your vote of six ayes, no noes. The motion carries to do pass House Bill 1611. Thank you, lady. Thank you. And we are. Okay. Uh, as far as I know, the next uh, hearing will be on Thursday morning. And we're adjourned. I understand. Thank you. I know. I know. I know. So, you Then they wouldn't fall under that standard. So it's good. I'm just wondering so far. I have a bit here. Hey, Maria. Right. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Oh, yeah, it's all kind of I'm just kidding. Uh, it's way too new. Well, yeah. Great time to do that. 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 Maybe those guys are going to have to do that. It's two and a half. Normally it's about 245, 250. Yeah. Kind of budget. Uh, was it here to Social service? Oh, that's good. Yeah, but it's like, yeah. Yeah, before, before I drop the new one. Okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> That's right. You can laugh at us all. <laughs> 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 <laugh
You're hearing it. You're hearing it tomorrow. You're coming. I know, yeah. but we're going to amend it on yeah. the hard bill. No, it's great. I was just thinking where that bill was. Mm -hmm. But I think that's all changed because we need to have. I'm not sure. The Select Committee on Social Services will now come to order. Secretary, please call the roll. Chair Allen? Here. Vice Chair Hagner? Here. Senator Preston? Here. Barr? Here. Conway? Here. Davis? Here. Fitzwater? Here. Franklin? Frederick? Here. Meredith? Here. Six, four, nine. We do have a quorum. This will be another marathon hearing. Um, we're going to go to House Bill 2351. I move that House Bill 2351 be voted to pass. Any discussion, Representative? This uh, deals with single loan uh, repayment for 
physicians in primary care to try to get the yeah. yeah. To try to get physicians out in areas of need, and it just adds psychiatry as uh, being qualified to, to qualify for these loan forgiveness programs. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Chair Allen? Aye. Mr. Hector? Aye. Representative Kirkton? Yes. Barr? Aye. Tom Wake? Aye. Davis? Aye. Fitzwater? Aye. Franklin? Frederick? Aye. Meredith? Aye. By your vote of nine ayes, no noes, you have voted House Bill 2351. Do pass. All right, let's go to House Bill 2617, and um, this came through your uh, health and mental health. I move that House Bill 2617 be voted to pass. Any discussion? Okay. Proceed. I was uh, asked by the sponsor to offer an amendment uh, that deals with uh, uh, autopsy and coroner's determinations of patients that are in hospice. Uh, but I don't have the document in front of me. And the amendment ends in point zero one H and it's been distributed. So it um, refers to in line five of the amendment, deletes the words need not be contacted and shall be notified in writing within 24 hours. So that's involving the coroner with a hospice death. And the medical director of the hospice has to sign off that it was a non-suspicious death. Okay, and I don't know, did you move for the adoption of this amendment? I haven't yet, but I do now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Representative uh, Kirkton. Uh, Representative Connolly and I do not have this amendment. Okay, individuals have the amendment. Uh, any discussion? Representative Mary. I don't know if this goes to the amendment or the president of the bill. I was curious. Can you, you don't have a microphone. Can you use a microphone? Okay, permission to inquire. Okay. I don't know if this applies to the amendment or if it applies to the bill itself. But I was, I was curious because I had something happen where someone was in um, a hospital and they were receiving palliative care after having trauma. And about a week after the person died, there was a phone call from the coroner. And the coroner said, how did this accident happen? The accident was explained, and the coroner said, oh, well, then this is an accidental death. Which, in that case, there was a double indemnity on the insurance. So there was twice as much insurance money there as originally, you know, 
consumed. And I was just wondering, is there anything in here like does the coroner go over all of the death certificates? So how does that work? I don't know how it works. I think this specifically addresses deaths that occur during a hospice situation. And if the director of the hospice finds that it is an expected death with nothing, you know, nothing suspicious or unusual. So they've been working at it a little while. They would be familiar with the individual having been, you know, receiving okay. care within the hospice organization. Yeah, because this person had been in the hospital for 32 days um, and was unconscious, well, purposely the entire time. And then they determined that it was an accidental death because of the, you know, the damage that was done. It wasn't like they had a stroke or a heart attack. It was an accident, actually. I was just wondering, is that something like that happens? I mean, I guess they're in hospice. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Well, I think the intent is that the, if the death is an expected death in a hospice situation, that the coroner doesn't have to come and certify that the death was indeed due to the cancer that the patient was admitted to. I, I don't think it uh, indicates the option of the family asking for an autopsy or having a full investigation. It's just as a matter of routine. They don't have to have the coroner come immediately, you know, lights and siren to the, to the death. Oh, yeah. Well, the family had no idea. The coroner just called and was like, who, what, why? Thank you. Okay, further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of adopting House Committee Amendment Number 1 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed by saying no. And the ayes have it. The motion carries. I move that we roll the adopted amendment into a substitute and adopt the substitute. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying no. The ayes have it. The motion carries. I move to that. House Committee sub for House Bill 2617 be voted to pass. Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Allen. Mr. Hegner. Representative Curtin. Yes. Mark. Aye. Conway. Aye. Davis. Aye. Fitzwater. Aye. Franklin. Frederick. Aye. Meredith. Aye. Time to zero. By your vote of nine ayes, no noes, you have voted House Committee sub for House Bill 2617 due pass. And we'll move to Senate Bill 607, Representative Hafner, you're going to be the Okay, I move that Senate Bill 607 be voted to pass. Any discussion? May I talk on the bill? Sure. This is the same bill that we've passed out of the House as a third party verification as the companion bill. And um, there is an amendment that ends in 0.03H that brings into line um, okay. No, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for that brief explanation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I move that we adopt House Committee Amendment Number 1. And this is from the underlying committee. amendment um, with the motion right now is about the home and community-based services to make sure that they're just verified on a yearly basis, not a quarterly basis.